So, welcome back to another guitar session with Jason Carey. We are playing guitar live tonight, Wednesday night, every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we're just talking about Jolene by Ray LaMontagne today. And so we're going to dissect the song starting with the chord progression. And then we're going to move through the chord progression. We're going to learn the chord progression so it's our foundation. It's our, it's our basis for the song. The framework upon which we could hang our melodic experimentations. So what we're going to do is use this song tonight to become or enhance our improvisational skills. Our skills <clears throat> at we're just sort of moving uh, a little further into the unknown today or tonight and making it uh, you know claiming it for our our own so without um, getting too bogged down in detail we're going to do a lightweight session tonight so we'll start by tuning up to make sure that we're all in standard tuning so low E and then A We'll just tune quickly, and if you have questions, go ahead and hit that, uh, hit the chat. We have a live chat rolling. D, we're in standard tuning for this song. G. B. Whoa, that was G again, I guess. Hmm. It happens. B and high E. Hi. <laughs> Some of my favorite old jokes. I used to do that when I started guitar teaching in 97 with 96, 97 with um, some of my younger students. Um, do you ever find yourself asking what does liberty mean to, to you? What does liberty mean to me? I, I find myself asking that same question all the time recently. So, so we're going to start by talking about G major chord. And we'll use this G chord with the last three fingers on the left hand, on the fretting hand. If you're a right hand guitar player, it's your left hand. If you're, if you're a left hander, if you're a lefty, then your chord, your chord hand or fretting hand will be your right hand. Um, in, the, in this case, the right hand would be my wrong hand because there's no way I'd be able, ever be able to do that. Uh, so if you're a lefty, uh, bear with us and just sort of do the mirror image. But if you're a lefty, chances are you probably already know how to deal with this problem. So any questions, hit the live chat. And we have low E on fret 3, finger 3, A, fret 2 on the D, A string. Sing finger two, open D, open G, open B, hooray for the open strings. And then open, well that E on the top will be fret three on the high E string. The next chord that we encounter, we'll keep these two fingers in the same exact locations. And we'll move that second finger up one string and then add finger one. You notice my hand is, it, it, the tendency is to let my palm touch or kiss the back of the guitar neck. That's sort of, that's a, a big no-no. Uh, it immediately limits left hand fingering capacity. So try to do this, try to drop that thumb down and try to remember to keep that, you know, that space between the bottom of the guitar neck and your palm. That's a great way to maintain balance on your left hand and it, it plays so much better like that and and it's so much more comfortable and so much more practical for, for me and for many others and then maybe one day if that's not your style yet maybe one day it'll be comfortable for you and if not don't worry about it just have fun so we'll use that these two fingers remember we're moving to a C chord with G in the bass now and we're using those two fingers and we're popping that second finger on fret 2 on the D finger one on the B string and it's a beautiful chord that A string happens to be choked out by the, the sort of like the roll of this third finger here 
So we'll lay it down enough, just enough, so that we can choke it out. And you'll notice the right hand, one and two and three and four and one and two and three, is just going through the sequence of alternate strokes. Down, up, 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 down, up. But we're not stroking, we're not attacking every time. Okay, so then we move from G to G7. So we go back to the first chord that we learned, G, and then we'll raise that fourth finger, plug in finger one on fret number one, Okay, that's sort of like the C chord that we're going to, but everything moves in one string. Okay, so now we're on a C chord. You hear in this song, you hear Ray's guitar use um, this C add nine. Okay, another chord that we're going to need is D. So that's open D, fret two. I like to use fingers one, two, and three for this one. One on fret two in the G, and then three on fret three in the B, and then two on fret two on the high E string. So here's the intro. That repeats itself. And then C with G in the bass, back to G. Okay. Then there's a string. So there's that G and then C with the back to G. And then so And then C. that C and then back to G with C or C with G in the bass. Same thing again. Hang on C and then C goes back to G. And then we walk down to we're on D with F sharp in the bass. That's kind of a you know like that what was that song? It was by America, and it was... <laughs> right, so we've got that open, that E minor chord. What? Cocaine flame in my bloodstream. Yeah, that's a great, it's a great tune. So we've got that E minor that actually will expand both of those fingers a little charge in there and those fingers go uh, so I think the low the second finger jumps down to the low E string while the third finger moves up to the G string okay so that's our transitional chord down to E minor from from G to E minor okay Jolie C I and G and then D and then back to E minor chord there, C with G in the bass, and then A minor, and then C, G with B in the bass, or C with B in the bass, and then A, Jolie.
So now what we're going to do, we've talked about all of the chords. Okay, so we're now what we're going to do as improvising musicians, we're going to take a quick examination, just a little peek. Let's see if I can find a thicker pick here. And I guess if you've been hanging out here long enough, you've seen these before. And no, I don't uh, get any sponsorships from Wiegand Picks, but they're really cool. And maybe one day he'll feel compelled to send me some, some picks to replenish these. These things last forever and they're a little expensive, so I don't lose them. I sort of care for them now. Uh, I remember being 14 or 15 and picks were, you know, were an unlimited uh, supply. So these are like four or five bucks a piece, I think. Maybe, I'm not sure, I'm something about that. But they're really cool picks. They're hard pick. I buy the really thick ones, but the perforation gives you a little more flex, flexibility right here in the middle of the pick where you would hold and gives you an additional grip. You benefit from that. But when we're talking about melody, I like to be able to, most, some melodic guitar players enjoy having a pick that can shape tone. And that means transferring energy efficiently. This pick is great for strumming because it's like really floppy. It's like not paper thin, but it's just above that thickness. So this is a much different, different thing. So one of the first things we should do, we should really learn how to do as, uh, as human beings is listen, right? We, want, we need to learn, all learn how to listen. We could all benefit from improving our listening skill. But more especially, a, a guitar player or a musician, we, we really have to listen. So we may uh, absorb what we want to learn and we may be able to uh, recreate what we or imitate what we want to learn then if we do that enough then we may we may if we're lucky we may find our our own musical voice so now what we're going to do is just talk about one scale that will work for the entire song going to play some rhythmic guitar and you're going to tear it apart in your own private um, sanctum all right your sanctum sanctorum okay so we have this G major pentatonic scale fret 3 on the low E string open A fret 2 on the A string open D fret 2 on the D string open G so we're playing G major pentatonic then open G that and have some fun but we'll start with fret three on the low E string open G A B D E and then G and then we'll stop there and we'll start there again G A open B D open E and then G third fret on the high E string and then descend everything that we ascend Also play. We can introduce the open low E string in this scale. So what I'm doing here is I'm borrowing notes from this scale, but sliding up into position number three. And we have this nice second finger start. It's not a root note because we're playing a G, but it's not a root note. It's not a G note. But it's a B note. Fret four on the G, and then fret three on the B, and then fret five on the B, and then fret th 
three on the high E string, which is a root note for G, and then fret five on the high E. Okay, so we have this really nice open to slide to fret four with the second finger on the G string. Finger one on fret three, finger three on fret five, finger one on three, What a great, what a great song. I mean, oh man, what a great, a brilliant song. And it's so well executed and so well delivered. So now what we're going to do is just kind of fool around with that scale. I'm going to play that G to C. And just, uh, I guess, hang out here. Check that out, okay? Uh, 03, 02, 02, 02, 03, 03. So 03 and then 302s. 02, 02, 02, 03, 03. So just noodle around with those for a couple minutes and I'll just give you some rhythmic accompaniment. position three and check it out. Sometimes you can go outside of the scale that we're talking about. So this G major pentatonic is a five note scale. One, two, three, four, five different notes before we run into G note again, okay? But we don't have to play it right there can play it up here too. So we can use that G open major scale. We can use that third position upper cup two walls, right? And then a roof. You know, a little triangle roof here and then two walls for the house. So we'll call that the little Jimi Hendrix house pattern. That's a pretty common pattern. Then we'll move on up here. And we'll use that, we'll borrow from the C major chord shape, but we'll move it up to fret number, position number seven, starting with fourth finger on fret number 10, right? On the A string, G note, root note, right? G note, A, B, D, E, and then back to G again, which is a root note. So we can have some fun with that. But now we can get up to position number 12 and it's just as if we were playing the open position again. Because after we ascend 12 frets on the guitar, for example, case in point here, open low E moves up to fret 12 and it finds an E note again. So E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, all right, so on and so forth for infinity, I guess. So E is now the open position. So we, this fret right, this open, this nut right here, the nut would have been, would be a fret now. Let's say that this is now 
this 12th fret is now the nut. So we'll have to use a, or this 12th fret here, we'll have to use a finger behind it. So finger one, four, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, four, one, four. Okay, so now what we're going to do is play G major pentatonic starting with fourth finger on the, and it's a bit of a stretch on an acoustic guitar, but we can do it. Finger four on fret number 15, finger one on the open A, no, fret 12 on the A, finger four, three on 14, and then 12, 14, 12, 14, 12, 15, 12, 15. Let's make a connection with the open position. O3, O2, 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 O3, O3. This would be O3, but it's now 1-4. One, 1-3, one, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, four, one, four. Okay, so let's take a quick break here before I explain a little more of this. And let's go ahead and like, share, and subscribe. If you're with us and you're hanging in there, uh, God bless your little soul. So we have this like, share, subscribe. We just ask for a little less, okay? L-S-S, like, share, subscribe. And it helps us out. And we have subscriber, subscriber, subscribers are growing all the time. And we are really think we're looking forward to continuing to grow this, this puppy. We've got a couple of tricks up our sleeves in the next couple of weeks. Uh, and I think we've been talking about doing this, um, about getting lighting up uh, some video time for some screen time for our friends in Australia. So we're almost there, guys, and just hang with us, and we'll be on air at a reasonable hour for you, 9 p.m. Uh, your time. All right, so we have all three. Just to review here a little bit, we cover the, the chords of the song, right? And these chords. is learn the song how to play the rhythm of the song so that way or teach a friend how to play the rhythm of the song or record the song so my So we can have all kinds of fun playing around, but just record yourself playing the chords for the song for as long as you possibly can stand it. And then you have a background track that you could just, well, I was gonna make a, um, as if I was using a tape deck. <laughs> that's what we used to do. But now it's like, get your iPhone out or whatever, and that's fine. Um, just to have something where you can play back through a speaker system not through your earphones, or your earbuds, or whatever you wear in your in your face now. Um, it's really important that we hear the music played outside of our own our own heads, and then we have something to respond to, melodically. Okay, so there are two separate things. So we need to hear that music that's playing that we just recorded playing back. We also need to hear our guitar. That we're playing and, and using as a melodic device. Two really important things to remember. You've got to listen to be a good human. You've got to listen to be a great musician. And uh, I guess you have to listen really, really, really hard if you want to be a world-class musician. But um, and that's a, I think that's a skill you can, you can, uh, you can manage. Okay, so here we go. Chords. Okay, we, I've been notified. This is not an emergency, but we only have four minutes left, and we're going to try to stick to our profile, or uh, what do you call it when you uh, format, or half hour format. So, any questions that right now, just go ahead and squeak them in, we'll get them. Um, but the chords need to be recorded, and then we play it back.
can do those open minor pen major pentatonics or third position major pentatonics or seventh position major pentatonics or twelfth position major pentatonic. Thank you.